Hey guys, in case you missed the title, this is actually part two of a two-part video, so if you haven't seen part one of my top ten favorite Pokemon movies, then uh, click either on the screen on the annotation or uh, in the description and uh, go watch that. Or don't, I really don't care what you do, but, you know, let's get on with the video, my top five favorite Pokemon movies. If you want to see ten to six, like I said, the video is on the screen or in the description. So let's, let's start this video. Start, start the video, please. Can we, can we start the? Ah, yes. What would a best Pokemon movies list be without the one that started it all? Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. It has almost everything you could ask for in a Pokemon movie. Epic battles, dope Pokemon, and the feels. The opening battle between Ash and Dawnfan Guy while a remix version of the Pokemon theme plays is one of the most memorable scenes in all of Pokemon. Speaking of memorable scenes, when the real Pokemon fight the cloned Pokemon and Pikachu refuses to fight, really sparks the idea of morality in the Pokemon world. Are Pokemon battles right? Are Pokemon essentially slaves to their trainers? The answer to these questions is no, but it really makes you think. The one thing I didn't like about this movie was the contradictory message. How can they possibly say that fighting is wrong when the whole Pokemon franchise was built upon forcing animals to fight each other? Wow, that sounds a lot worse than it actually is. Everything else about the movie was great, especially Mew. Mew was an absolute savage in this movie. Mewtwo's over here just talking about killing everybody and everything that isn't a clone, and Mew's just like, yo, is that my tail? I. Must. Chase! Mew just knew it was better than Mewtwo from a willpower standpoint, so it literally did not care. Either that, or it was really excited about its tail. Either way, it teaches Mewtwo a thing or two. I could probably talk about Mewtwo as a character for like 10 minutes, so I'll keep this brief, but Mewtwo is one of the most complex characters in the entire Pokemon series. He had to come to terms with becoming a clone and had to embrace who he was, which is quite relatable to some people. I almost forgot, how could I not talk about the Tears of Life scene? I know it's cliche and Gen 1-er-ish, but you'd be lying if you didn't at least try to shed a tear at this scene. It really shows the connection between Pokemon and people, and how a group could come together towards a common goal, which is really what Pokemon is all about. It's about coming together with other people who love Pokemon as much as you, and this scene, being the other way around, is part of why I really like this movie and why I believe it's deserving to be in my top 5. Pokemon the Movie 2000 does everything the first movie did, but better. I know when talking about the Entei movie in the last video, I said that sometimes simplicity is better, but the power of one takes simplicity and throws it out the window, yet still manages to be amazing. I normally hate Chosen One storylines because most of the time they're just used as a cop-out for self-realization and character development, but in this movie, Ash knows he's the quote-unquote Chosen One, but still doesn't think that he's that significant. He doesn't tap in any insane power or anything to help him save the day, he just uses the power of his Pokémon and his motivation for to save the world to get the job done. As for the plot, this movie is very strong at some points and very weak at others. For example, the idea that the legendary birds fighting could potentially end the world is a plot point that is explained enough to a point where you don't question it, but the idea that these, all these Pokemon came to the Orange Islands because they feel like they need to, and then not do anything just seems pointless and doesn't add to anything. This movie has the perfect blend of heroism and humor, and I love it. Everyone giving Ash a pep talk about how he's the chosen one is the only one who could save the world, and Ash just wishes his name was Bob. Well, right now, I wish my mom had named me Bob instead of Ash. Basically, any scene with Slowking falls into this category, because Slowking is just a savage who knows everything, including the fact that the world is going to be fine. Team Rocket was also really great in this movie. This was the only movie where they wanted to help Ash and actually succeeded in doing so. In other Pokemon movies, such as the Entei movie, they claim to help but don't end up actually doing anything, but in The Power of One, they literally attempt to sacrifice themselves for the fate of the world. This is why I love Team Rocket in general. They're the worst at being bad and are better off being good guys but don't realize it until moments like the second movie. All in all, The Power of One is one of the best Pokemon movies ever made in my opinion because it does everything the first movie does, improves upon it, and adds stuff that the first movie didn't do. It blends awesomeness, heroism, and uh, and more awesomeness, yeah that, that totally sounds okay, to create one of the best stories in Pokemon movie history. Considering the Pokemon anime has been going on for about 20 years and we're still following Ash as our main protagonist is an amazing feat, but at times it can get a little stale. 
Basically, every Pokemon movie follows the same formula, where Ash becomes a hero and saves the day at the end. But however, Pokemon Ranger and the Temple of the Sea was a great change of pace from the last eight movies. Instead of making Ash the main focus, the story follows Mei as she bonds with Manaphy. This was something that had never been done in movies yet and is yet to be replicated. There was never a Misty-centric storyline for a movie, and I really like how they made up for this in Movie 9 with Mei. Some people think that Misty would have been better for this movie considering she, you know, trains water types, but they explained it decently well for Mei. Mei was a character in the anime who didn't have much development. In the anime, her bond with her Torchic and goal for Pokemon contests was the only thing close enough to development for her. She was basically just there to be the female protagonist. The Manaphy movie changed this and made Mei the main focus and gave her a reason to be there. The mother-daughter relationship between Mei and Manaphy was a great way to give Mei a bit more character. She had always been one of the more motherly female protagonists, and this just adds to that. As far as the antagonist, Phantom the Pirate, this guy was actually threatening. Who knows what he would have done with Manaphy if he had gotten his hands on it. I mean, just look at this guy. He looks like he'd kidnap little kids and make them cook raviolis for him. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli. In all seriousness though, this guy posed an actual threat as opposed to Deoxys, for example, where it would have destroyed a city at most. Phantom would have basically destroyed the entire ecosystem because science. The ending to this movie gets me every time. Just BAM! Right in the feels. Goodbye scenes in Pokemon movies are usually pretty sad, but this is definitely one of the sadder ones. Mei is like, what, 10 years old? And just watched her child grow up and leave her forever. That's gotta be tough on a kid, and I like how they used Mei's maturity in this scene. Just goes to show that a Pokemon movie doesn't need to have epic battles and stuff as the main focus. They always seem to forget that there's other characters, and this movie was a great change of pace because of it. It was one of those movies where the journey mattered more than a destination, and it creates something that is yet to be replicated in any other Pokemon movie. Including the fact that they completely botched the story by making Ash the hero at the end because Deus Ex Machina, but hey, sh shut up. This might be a bit of a controversial choice considering this movie was albeit not very good, but it still holds a special place on this list. Pokemon the Movie 12, Arceus and the Jewel of Life was honestly pretty bad. There was no real reason for Ash and Co. to be there, and the time travel things made things way too confusing. There's this huge paradox where Ash needs to go back in time to stop past events from happening, but in doing so he prevents the event that caused him to go back in time in the first place, it's it's overly confusing. A lot of people didn't like this movie because they thought that Arceus was a huge buttwad, which is a very fair argument. However, he is technically the Pokemon world's version of a god, so it makes sense that he'd be mad at humans for essentially enslaving the very species he set out to create. And like, you know, freezing him in carbonite or whatever that was. I don't... I don't know, man. This movie is low-key deep, and we're not talking fake deep like FNAF, we're talking like Inception deep. In the end, Arceus was really just a god who was concerned about its creation and didn't want anything bad to happen again. I feel like that's something anybody can relate to. Sometimes we get so protective over things that we would do anything to protect it, even if it means destroying it in the first place. This movie was the perfect end of the Sinnoh trilogy, which was very apparent in the ending song, but I already talked about that in another video. Arceus and the Jewel of Life may have had weird writing, but it was low-key a very emotional story where the real protagonist is Arceus. Never in my life has there been a Pokemon movie that actually made me shed a tear, and that movie is none other than Pokemon Heroes. Words cannot describe how much I love this movie, but I'll see what I can do. Pokemon Heroes takes place in a place called Ultimar, which is heavily based off of Venice, Italy, and it's a really unique setting, and I like how they use it to its full potential, especially during the opening scene and during the climax of the movie. Speaking of the opening scene, it was so different hearing the Master Quest theme without a battle going on in the background. The race scene in general was really well animated. The CG in this movie was so well done, and it wasn't there when it didn't need to be. The soundtrack was also so fitting for a place like Altamar, and the ending songs hit me right in the feels, given the events that just transpired. I like how the ending scene was super ambiguous. Was that Bianca or Latias? What's the deal with the two Latios and a Latias in the sky? Did Latios create two new Latios as well as a new Soldu? What is going on here? The ambiguity makes you think about the movie even after you're done watching it, and that's something I can't say about a movie like Pokemon Forever, for example. The bond between Ash and Latias, as well as Latias' development, was done really well. Latias had to grow up and assume responsibility when Latios couldn't do anything and had to come to terms that it was a life-or-death situation. She didn't have time to fool around. 
Latios knew this and he sacrificed his life for it. The scene gets me every time. It was such an emotional scene with Latios realizing she'll never see Latios again. Now please excuse me while I go cry for a minute. Anyways, I really like Annie and Oakley as characters. They have very evil motives and actually seem to learn from their mistakes unlike certain other villains. When Oakley takes control of the defense mechanism and goes all power crazy, Annie realizes what they're actually doing and tries to stop her, but once the soul do is destroyed, they realize that they messed up. They end up getting their comeuppance and seem to turn over a new leaf. It's hard to say for sure considering we never see them again, but they seem pretty tame in prison. For a movie meant to transition Gen 2 to Gen 3, it's really unique and deviates from the Pokemon movie formula at times. Latias has become one of my favorite Pokemon simply because of her role in this movie. The setting, the characters, the music, the everything about this movie is the essence of why I love Pokemon heroes to no end and why it most certainly deserves the number one spot on my list.